The Nazca Lines, unquestionably one of the most enigmatic ancient sites on Earth. Enormous ancient artworks that since their modern discovery, a number of individuals have attempted to, and seemingly failed to, adequately explain. Created to such enormous scale, many of these theories put forward demanded the utilization of advanced ancient flying machines just to enable their full appreciation. However, what many are not aware of is another particularly baffling structure that litters Nazca. Known as puquillos, they are stone structures which corkscrew deep into the ground, each connected to a channel of groundwater far below the surface. It must be noted, for many millennia the ancient sites these mysterious structures connected, and indeed the locations in which they are found within, have endured brutal episodes of drought, and for any ancient civilization to have flourished here would have required tremendous skills and ingenious solutions. And the Paquillos could undoubtedly be perceived as striking examples of this, displaying this ancient group's high level of intelligence. Not only that, but we feel strong indication of a civilization who had drastically more capability and technology at their disposal than that of the Incas. And although modern academia attempt to discreetly shrug off such astonishing works of ancient genius with the simple term pre-Incan, we believe that these pre-Incans they speak of were once part of a civilization far in advance of anything funded individuals will ever willingly admit to. As explained by Rosa La Sapinara of the Institute of Methodologies for Environmental Analysis, Satellite imagery has discovered a remarkable past function to these once mysterious spiral holes. They have realized that they were an ancient complex hydraulic system designed to extract and move groundwater over tremendous distances beneath the arid landscape above them. According to La Sapinara, examining satellite images has allowed scientists to analyze the movement of pumped water throughout the desert. Quote, all holes were interconnected via a system of tunnels, similar to modern subways. Each spiral hole appears to serve the function of a pump, filling the tunnels with air and directing the water to a specific location. In this way, water flowed to ancient settlements from where it was most desired, from areas of abundance." End quote. It seems that scientists have been forced to reluctantly admit due to the overwhelming evidence of the system's sophistication, that the original engineer's know-how and workmanship was of such high quality that not only does it rival modern water delivery systems, but even after several millennia, many of the paquillos still function perfectly. Furthermore, to have initially built them, the builders required as yet undiscovered advanced equipment such as air pumping technologies mechanisms far out of the realms of any academically studied ancestor. They also required an intimate understanding of geology, many meters below their feet, and indeed, the understanding of how they were going to manipulate future movement of the groundwater below. Also, intriguingly, many parts of these tunnels successfully passed through tectonic faults, as if they had prior advanced knowledge of these also. We personally find this discovery of the Paquillo's past function as nothing short of miraculous, making them some of the strongest evidence for not only a highly advanced pre-Incan culture, but of a technologically developed ancient people with in-depth knowledge of geology, hydrology, and many other seemingly modern understandings, developed through the utilization of advanced technologically accomplished study. They are undoubtedly highly compelling. Our moon. A strange thing, don't you think? Have you ever gazed upon a full moon and wondered, wondered how it got there? What strange forces could have possibly built it? There are many moons within our solar system, yet few are as strange as ours. No others are known to ring like a bell when struck. No others possess such luminosity as our moon. In the 1970s, Michael Vassin and Alexander Shcherbakov 
of what was then the Soviet Academy of Sciences, created a thesis that the Moon is actually the remnants of a very ancient spaceship, created by, as yet, unknown civilization. The article was entitled, Is the Moon the Creation of Alien Intelligence?, and was published in Sputnik, the Soviet equivalent of Reader's Digest. The suggestion of a hollow moon first appeared in science fiction when H.G. Wells wrote about a hollow moon in his 1901 book, The First Men in the Moon. Michael Vassin and Alexander Shcherbakov's hypothesis is based on the fact that large lunar craters, generally assumed to be formed from massive meteor impacts, are generally too shallow for scars made upon an organic body, and can have flat or even convex bottoms. They propose that small meteors are making cup-shaped depressions in the rocky surface of the moon, while the larger meteors are drilling through a rocky upper layer, hitting an armored hull underneath. Does George Lucas know something we don't? It seems he couldn't resist adding just one crater. The authors referenced earlier speculations by astrophysicist Iosif Shklovsky, who suggested that the Martian moon Phobos was an artificial satellite and hollow. Interestingly, Phobos has been claimed to appear to be hollow by numerous astronomers, who have stated that it appears to have an opening on one side, making it, in a sense, similar in shape to an empty shell. Phobos's orbit is also a complete mystery. Many who have researched it claim that it should have crashed into the surface of Mars many moons ago. Between 1972 and 1977, Seismometers installed on our moon by the Apollo missions recorded strange moonquakes. The moon was described to have been ringing like a bell during some of those quakes. The supportive evidence was then brought to popular attention in March 1970, in an article in Popular Science. When Apollo 12 deliberately crashed the ascent stage of its lunar module into the moon's surface, it was claimed that the moon rang like a bell for an hour, leading to arguments that it must be hollow. Several YouTubers, most notably Crow777, have supposedly recorded what is now known as lunar waves. If confirmed to exist, this may prove there is some form of functioning shield or scanning system being seen working on its surface. The fact that the Moon is less dense than the Earth is also strong supportive evidence that it is indeed hollow. In 1963, NASA launched its final manned mission during the Mercury program. On board the Atlas IX rocket known as Faith 7 was pilot astronaut Gordon Cooper. Project Mercury was the first human spaceflight program of the United States, running from 1958 through 1963. An early highlight of the space race, its goal was to put a man into Earth orbit and return him safely before the Russians. Cooper's cool-headed performance and piloting skills led to a basic rethinking of design philosophy for later space missions. While Cooper was stuffed into his tiny module for 32 hours during his orbit, he was tasked with a covert mission, the results of which have only recently come to light. He was given a cutting-edge piece of long-range magnetic detection technology, which was installed into a camera on board the Faith 7 spacecraft. His mission while on board was to capture images of the globe using this sensing technology to locate any possible secret nuclear development sites which could be considered a threat to America. During this procedure, Cooper became aware of an amazing capability which the camera possessed. Not only was it sensing possible hidden bases, but was also capturing anomalies deep in the oceans of Earth. Cooper deduced that these pings were actually all the shipwrecks which dot the ocean floors from throughout history which had been spotted by the machine due to the considerable amount of metals within the wrecks. It seems having the courage to go into space, and the intelligence and reflexes to survive the experience, will endow you with some very special rewards, in the most unlikely of forms. What this mission had given to Cooper was a treasure map of Earth, which no other person could possibly possess. Cooper dutifully recorded the geographical coordinates of the anomalies as was required of him, and when he returned to Earth, he also mapped them out on a sea chart which became known as the treasure map from space, by his lifelong friend and renowned treasure hunter, Roger Milkos. Throughout the rest of his life, Cooper would secretly compile substantial research regarding historical shipwrecks that corresponded with the locations on the space map. Cooper had planned to organize expeditions to find the treasures, but unfortunately, before he could finish his work, he died in 2004 of heart failure. 
passing his map and all accompanying research to Milkos on his deathbed. Now Milkos has set about finding these shipwreck treasures in a new Discovery Channel series called Cooper's Treasure. He told the press, quote, we want to bring to light the new stories of the shipwrecks that have yet to be discovered, tell the story and share it with the world, and share it with the host countries that are allowing us to do the research. What we are trying to do, is to open a dialogue about the past with these host countries. End quote. I will keep you posted on any substantial finds they make.